Anna. It was time for us to go to the hospital. Jessica and her mother were already at my house. Our moms sat in the kitchen drinking coffee like they often do now. Jessica and I sat around with some books, but even she found it difficult to focus enough to read. Danielle's here, I announced as soon as I saw the pickup truck pull into our snowy driveway. Mom came to the porch door to greet her with me. Oh my goodness, I heard Mom say to herself. She didn't even realize I was staring right at her. Same old red farm truck. Did she know that truck? I didn't get it. Hi, Danielle, I said as Danielle came up the steps. This is my mom, Terry. Hi, Danielle, Mom said. Come on in out of the cold. Danielle stomped the snow off her shoes on our welcome mat. I took her coat and hung it on our rack. It's nice to, fi to finally meet you. Anna has told me so much about you, Mom said. They shook hands. It's nice to meet you too, ma'am, Danielle said back. Thank you for letting me come with you. I'm glad you could join us, Mom said, and you can call me Terry. I led Danielle further into the house. When I looked back, Mom stood gazing out the door. After a few long seconds, she turned away. She smiled at me and said, Why don't you give Danielle a quick tour of the house and hang out for a few minutes, and then we'll go. I'm kind of wondering if moms are going to talk for a minute and kind of clear up the bad juju they have. What were you looking at? I asked. Nothing really. That's my brother, Charlie, who dropped me off, Danielle said. I didn't know you had a brother, I said. Yeah, he's 27, a lot older than me. He works on the farm with my dad and grandpa. I was wrong. Her mom's not even there. I looked at mom. She's 27, too. He drives that red Ford everywhere, Danielle said. Always has, Mom said. Does it still have a dent in the driver's side door? Yes, ma'am, Danielle said. My jaw dropped. What is going on? How did Mom know that? And why wasn't Danielle as shocked as me about her knowing? I looked at Mom before I could get anything out of my mouth. I didn't know what to say anyway. She said, a quick tour, Anna. Ooh, that's today's question. What do you think is going on with the situation of Anna's mom knowing about the red truck Danielle's brother is driving? It's getting kind of juicy. Danielle. Danielle, you're young, just like my brother. I wanted to say to Anna's mother, but I didn't want to be disrespectful. So I didn't say anything as she stood staring out the door at Charlie. I could tell Anna was playing matchmaker again, but I didn't say anything about that either. My family would never want to see Charlie and Terry together. Never. I also met Jessica's mom. She was very nice. You can call me Julie or Mrs. Reitman, whichever one you're more comfortable saying, she said. Anna's house was simple, but nice. I guess she didn't need a big old house when it was only you and your mom. The thing I liked best about Anna's place was the artwork hanging on some of the walls. I took a closer look at one sketch and read the name, Terry Adams, at the bottom. Anna's mother was an artist? I looked down at the sketch I held in my hands, the one that came from my bedroom wall. I had brought it to leave with Mr. Turup in Mr. Turup's room. Mrs. Adams must have noticed me looking at her work and my work. Is that one of your sketches, she asked? Anna has told me you're a beautiful artist. I held the drawing out for her to see, but I didn't say anything. Well, I'd say Anna was right. That is a lovely piece, Danielle. Thank you, ma'am, I said. You've done some wonderful things with shadowing and texture. She pointed to different areas of my sketch. I'm not sure what that mean means, ma'am but thank you. Next time you come over, I'd be happy to do some sketching with you, she said, and I'll give you a few pointers if you'd like. Next time I come over, she had said. Do you think she thinks there'll be a next time? Probably not. Anna and Jessica and her mom joined us. Told you she was an amazing artist, Anna said to her mom. Mrs. Adams smiled at us. Come on, Danielle, I'll show you some of mom's other drawings in my bedroom. I followed Anna, but not before I turned to Miss Adams and smiled. 
I wondered what could possibly be the bad influence in Anna's house. I like it here. I like the two people who lived here. I also knew Grandma wouldn't be as easily convinced. After hanging out in Anna's bedroom, it was time to go. On the car ride, the three of us sat in the back seat. Jessica held her book, Anna held her plant, and I held my special sketch. We were all quiet. I stared out the window at the passing snowbanks and tried to keep from thinking about the snowball day. But that was impossible. For the rest of my life, I knew that snow would trigger my memory of the accident. Jessica, Act 9, Scene 2. Characters. Me, me, Julie, my mother, Danielle, my friend, Anna, my friend, Terry, Anna's mother. Action! The elevator doors opened. We stepped into the white hall. I thought of my first day at school when my heart had thumped in my chest. The smell of disinfectant had lingered into the hallway. The smell of rubbing alcohol and iodine dominated this hospital hallway. Instead of the chatter of school kids arriving after summer vacation, the only thing I could hear was the incessant beeping of those scary machines. This was way worse than the first day of school. I swallowed. I gripped and squeezed and fidgeted with the book in my hands. Al Capone does my shirts. Good book, y'all should read it. On that first day, Mr. Trupp had told me that he liked happy endings, so I brought him this book. I knew that he wouldn't be able to see or read it, but I wanted him to have it. Plus, having something in my hands helped me with my nerves. I'm glad his door wasn't too far away, otherwise I might not have made it. But I did, and so did Danielle and Anna. We were here for each other. We stopped just outside his door. The black marker spelled out, Trupp. I rubbed my finger on it. It didn't smear. I looked at Danielle and Anna. There was no hiding our fear. My mother and Terry stood behind us for support, but they also let us do this on our own. I looked back at them. We're right here, Mom said. We'll come in with you, Terry added. I took a deep breath and readied myself for what I would see. Anna. How are you doing, Mom asked. I shook my head. The hallway was so sad and frightening and long. Beeping and coughing and moaning noises came from everywhere. Mom placed her hand on my shoulder. I'm here, she said. How did you know about the dent in Charlie's truck? I whispered. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'll tell you later. Do you know him? Yes, I know Charlie, Mom said. But I had no idea. He had a little sister. We stopped. Mr. Turrup's door was cracked open, but not enough for me to see inside. Suddenly, my worries and questions about Mom and Charlie vanished. They were quickly replaced by all my worries for Mr. Turrup. Was I ready for this? Danielle, Jessica, and I looked at each other and did our best to prepare for what was coming next. Danielle. There was no turning back. Dear God, it's Danielle. Please be with me. I'm going to really need your help. I guess I could have waited in the car or in the lounge, but being with brave friends kept me moving forward. Beep. Beep. <coughs> hack, hack, hack. Moan, moan, groan. The chorus of hospital noises made me cringe. I felt my shoulders pushing into my ears. We walked past an old lady sitting in the hallway. She was shaking and drooling in her wheelchair. I could hear Grandma saying, You'd better put me in the ground before you send me off to one of them places with all those drooling geezers. For a second, I laughed inside thinking about that, but just for a second. We stopped. The sign on the door said to rupt. The door was partially open, but I couldn't see inside. That's probably a good thing, because I may have run back to the car had I seen what Mr. Turrup looked like. The three of us nodded at each other silently. We were ready, or so we thought. This is when I'll need you most. Jessica, I'm going to stop here. 
I don't want to stop here, but we have a few more people and I don't have time. So, oh boy, the anticipation of them walking into that hospital room with Mr. Truck is killing me. I'm making my heart sad, but I'm curious about what's going to happen. So let's focus right now on um, Danielle's brother, Charlie, and Anna's mom, Terry. And what in the world their past may have, um, what's going on there? So what do you think? What kind of juicy stuff do you think is going on? Do you think they went to school together? Do you think they dated? Do you think they had a bad run-in? What do you think? Curious. I'm ready to find out. See y'all.